morning, we were discussing a lot of different topics. And then all of a sudden she says, it's weird. I feel an energy. I've never felt this before. And I'm like, you finally allowed something to come in. She opened up one of the compressed crack <laughs> energies in her auric field where she is resistant. And that energy was able to get in and she recognized it and, and it did something and she could feel it there. And she's like, this is weird and all this stuff. And I'm like, no, this is where on a higher level. And it's like, we have to open the accordion mm. and we got to expand it. But since we were children, we try to compress it. Every now and then the universe opens it, freaks us out and we close it. And the universe is like, this is everything. This is going to free you. This is going to help you in every way. And some of these, these uh, parts of our auric field have been compressed for quite a few lifetimes. And every now and then we'll open it and we'll have a sensation and it's releasing all kinds of toxins, all kinds of things. And our body is purging because it needs to release all kinds of old. It's like a pressure cooker. You have to let the steam off or it'll blow up. The human body, when it's adjusting the cells, every last thing, it's trying to release something because you're carrying things. And now that opportunity, whatever is going on is allowing this stuff. So they say a lot of times when you're spiritually evolving, all of a sudden it feels like you got a cold, a flu, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And you'll go through all this stuff and you'll have all kinds of symptoms of being sick. But actually, it's just your whole body releasing lower vibrations. Throughout this meditation, by the end of the meditation, you can be flying on energy. Like if you just allow that expansion and just really let that energy in. And this is where Cindy, she'll allow just a tiny, minute little piece in and then she'll shut it off for a few days. And then she'll see if she can bring it back in and see if she can allow it to expand. And she she goes in and out of this. And and I just watch. <laughs> I, I don't try to provoke or I don't try to... Influence. push her deep into it i'm like no she has the awareness it just she's got to have the desire and the focus because once she does that and it pops open and she realizes <clears throat> she's just going to stay in it and this is where everybody goes in and out of this i know uh even zarina since i met her ian and that they go in and out and i see it expand really big then it compresses and then all of a sudden it's down then you attract all these people, naysayers and the people with the crosses and the pitchforks and the fire, mm -hmm. and they're coming at you. And, you know, all of a sudden you have all this stuff going on and you open up, everything changes. You attract really loving, good, supportive people. And just the universe opens you up and you're just magic. And then all of a sudden it shut down again. And we do these things. And it's like, we don't understand how to open those inner dimensions. And there's many, many different ones. And we seal them shut in. There's ways the universe is trying to subtly help us to realize, okay, I'm just letting go, letting this expansion and conscious come in. Because the whole idea of life and spirituality is figure yourself out. The biggest realization you'll come to at some point is having compassion for yourself. Because if you don't have compassion for yourself, you don't have compassion for nobody or nothing on the planet. After 500,000 lifetimes of trying to become this enlightened being and failing over and over and over, here you have an opportunity to, oh man, I've messed up all these times. So now I'm going to have compassion and I'm going to start, instead of trying to save and heal and fix and feel sorry for the world, I'm going to feel sorry for myself and have compassion and I'm going to allow myself to become this light being. Okay, so everything Joe just said there was something really big because him and I talked about it for about an hour this morning and we were able to drop really deep in what he said there. So he's just like, you have lived thousands of lifetimes and you like, this is my interpretation of what he said. <laughs> okay. So you have lived a thousand lifetimes, thousands of lifetimes, and you have not been able to attain enlightenment. And so here you are in this lifetime, in this human body, having this experience, and you have all the opportunities you've had in all the other lifetimes to, again, take your soul to the highest level. And so when, like, having compassion for yourself that all those thousands of lifetimes you were not able to do it. It's like loving yourself for the journey that you're on. And it's just like, hey, look, 
we haven't done this, but it's okay. We've learned a lot. Now, what can we do next? And it's like, and then you, you get yourself on that path of like loving yourself, having compassion for yourself, but moving forward into some like uncharted territory that your soul hasn't experienced before. You know, it's like opening up the door. It's like, I cracked it a little bit this morning and I was like, I feel this energy in my like heart area. And then I registered it. I'm like, wait a second. I never feel energy in the heart area. <laughs> I'm like, this is new. This is good. I'm all for this. So it was exciting. We all have people and things in our lives around us and having compassion for them because a lot of them are resistant to a lot of things because your energy is changing really fast. is making lots of things go on. Mm -hmm. And you have to have the people around you match your energy, even if they're not doing it consciously. You have to get their angels and their soul and other things to start having this energy fit in because um, it's like viruses come in our bodies, like a cancer comes into our body and it's a host and it stays in us two, three hundred years. It just is in there. It's just vibrating. It's just allowing itself to survive and live. And then one time it gets really, really aggressive and it takes over and it just consumes everything and actually kills you. And then the cancer is like, oh, shit, that maybe I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I should have allowed my host to stay that way. And I could have had a nice environment to carry on living. And it, it's a weird thing because it's going on, even though you're not fully conscious of it. And there's all kinds of people and things. They all have their own beliefs. And their belief some things you're doing even though it's really good feels like a virus and it may feel very threatening to them it makes them feel agitated worried or sometimes they think you've gone crazy and this and, and they want to save you they want to feel sorry for you not realizing that what you're doing is really amazing mm -hmm. and they're trying to hold a thought it's like my mother when she commands archangel michael to come in and swing his flaming sword around and spank me and make me run to church and go oh i'm a heathen i'm so sorry i need to pray you know in the church and so she every time i do something that's spiritual it impacts her and my family in that and it sets them off and they'll go oh yeah joe is like you know and joe and the devil or satan or whatever they're doing things again instead of going this is what i want this is mm -hmm. something that's really beautiful but they feel like I'm trying to give them cancer or something. There's a virus or something. And mm. they know there's something really making them feel good, but then they want to attack and they want to distort and twist it. And it's like, I just need the universe to help them to adjust. So my energy is not threatening or anything else. So somewhere inside they're feeling peaceful and safe. And it's whenever you go to meditations and that, you have to allow your energies to adjust to each person. And you have to allow them all to be safe. It's like even in this group, like mm -hmm. in the first hour, we all eventually we match one another's energy. All kinds of beautiful things go on. The universe comes in. <clears throat> Everybody has some really, really neat experiences and uh, throughout the meditation. And then when it's done, this energy comes in, it fills your space and it stays with you. And this is where when things are unknown, even though our minds and our energies and that sometimes really understand this our humanness really wants to resist and fight and that's where that compassion comes in for yourself and others all around because so many things got to come in and support everybody mm -hmm. it can't just be one-sided like if the teeter-totter is here and it's one-sided everything is here and whatever is up here is never you know it's ungrounded I remember when we were on teeter-totters and I used to love putting a little kid on the other side and I was bigger and heavier. And I'd say, hold on. And, and the kid just about would fly in the air and they'd just be freaked right out. And I'd hold them up there and they'd want to get down and they'd start getting agitated. They get scared. They're going to fall off and I'm bouncing it and doing things. And I'm trying to do it playfully, but they're terrified until I actually let them down and they can get off safely. And this is sort of that idea with spirituality this thing is moving up and down but where is that balance where everything is flowing to everybody you're receiving every last thing you need and it, it just moves and you just know it's all safe and okay so the universe is playing with you not 
to terrify you, though you may feel terrified, it's not the universe doing that. You're the one that's just like, I've been, I'm in something unknown. I don't feel safe. So that's just like a filter inside of yourself or something. Yeah. And the person is there to teach you this because the whole world is challenging you and you're bringing in knowledge, wisdom, healing. People are coming to you like you're, you're the only flower that's going to produce pollen that's going to make honey. So all the starving bees are coming mm -hmm. and they're landing on you like, oh, this is really nice. And then they're leaving. They're like, oh, that's toxic. That's bad. We can't go there. We can't be filled with all this wonderfulness. And then they come in and they all want to sting you and they all want to devour you in some way. Mm. And this is something inside themselves and they just realize it's just going to get more and more and more and they will become that. And this is where it, it, it will unbalance in different ways. How do you have compassion and hold it in that balance? So it just fluctuates really, really nicely and you're just happy. And sometimes you need to sit with a person who's a mechanic. So you got to take out a wrench and show them how to tighten, loosen a bolt or pull out a light bulb and put in a new one. They go, ah! Oh, genius oh the light worked you know and this is where the universe brings you up and down and this is where people get frustrated because you have to match things and instead of doing that you can invite them this way you can have them match you in a really really safe way and then they gently go back and they go back to being the mechanic but it's transforming them. And this is where, like I say, you start understanding when you're holding that and sitting in that compassion for your love and for everybody, it does something really, really big. And this is, you're recognizing that and you got to ask yourself, am I an overachiever? I had to recognize that in the past because I was studying about 50 things at once. I was doing so many things and I was trying to cram it all in. Mm -hmm. I was studying I Ching, astrology, I was doing spirituality, numerology, you name it. And I had books everywhere in every hour, every minute of the day, I was just in things. And I just went and went and went. And I just go searching people and I go places and I sit and sit and sit. And then I go back and I just go in and I tried to go to workshops and everything. And I put a couple of years into that. And I just went because I thought I needed to do that today. And I realized that's not a truth. You do it over time, but I pushed myself and I wanted to be perfect at everything. Anything and everything I did, I tried to do to perfection. I was beyond, just about drove me crazy. And one day I'm like, I'm done with this. Even doing carpentry, like my cuts had to be exactly perfect. I had to fit so good that it was not even a fraction off where I just was so mad at myself. And it just took so much out of me. And one day I'm like pissed on it. <sighs> Oh, there's a big crack there. Who cares? It's still in there. And I freaked out for a few days. 